looks like me. <laughs> as that slide suggests, we know Albert Einstein as a giant of science, but as we can see, he was uh, not too shabby in the philosophy of life department either. Fortunately, I am not aware of anyone who lives exclusively one way or the other. There may be some cynics completely immune to amazement as well, some effervescent spirits whose sense of wonder is unquenchable. Most of us toggle back and forth. Some days, nothing seems miraculous. Everything is commonplace, boring, or to be kinder ordinary. And then some extraordinary thing happens. The birth of a child, a mountaintop vista, some beautiful moment of connection, and suddenly we're in the presence of the miraculous. Mind expanded, heart filled, all of life illuminated by this experience. And then the moment's gone, and it's back to the everyday. This seems built into us, a part of human nature. We're dualists. We learn night from day, self from other, good from bad. The extraordinary we view as somehow miraculous versus the ordinary, nothing but routine. But I am convinced we can have miracles whenever we want them. In fact, I'll contradict myself and suggest there's no such thing as the extraordinary. Everything is ordinary. Births, mountains, connecting, epiphanies, these things happen every day all over the world. So what makes any of it extraordinary? And the answer is we do. When we bring something extra, extra attention, patience, awareness, extra stillness, a silence in listening, an extra deep sensing, savoring. That is how we transform the ordinary into extraordinary, and that path leads straight to Einstein's assertion that everything can be experienced as a miracle. Now, that's not a new idea. Miracles are everywhere if we just slow down, pay attention, wake up. It's been talked and written about, philosophized and sermonized about for centuries. We know the truth of this, but do we live as if we know it? How often the miracle of a baby seems to fade into the stupefying fatigue and repetitions of early child rearing. How many stories of summiting Mount Everest end with the climber spent, dazed, unable to feel the achievement? How often has a sunset reminded us of all we didn't get done that day or what we have to do tomorrow or of life's brevity? And yes, it is brief. But how much more filled with living would these brief lives of ours be if we could just feel the miracle already present in any moment? What then is that extra we can bring to transform the ordinary and to feel life at its fullest and most vibrant? I'd like to share a secret that literally changed my life. It's simple. And that may be why it works. It's about beauty, and that's perhaps what makes its simplicity profound. I know a woman whose mother was imprisoned in a Japanese prisoner of war camp in Indonesia during World War II. Nearly 80% of her fellow inmates did not survive. The daughter has often marveled that despite those horrendous circumstances, the sense of doom that prevailed in the camp her mother emerged as a woman of joy and hope and lived that way to the end of her days. So she inquired, how was that possible? What was her secret? Her mother's response, I would try to do three things every day. One, to see something beautiful. Two, to hear something beautiful. Three, to say something beautiful. Despite the horror around her, she wouldn't rest until she had accomplished her goal every day of her imprisonment and every day thereafter. It's a rich formula. It's good soul work. It may even redeem a little bit of the disaster and despair around us. And we can do it today 
every day to see something beautiful, to hear something beautiful, to say something beautiful. And I would add one more, to do something beautiful. Now, that does raise a question. How do we decide if something is beautiful or not? And part of me wants to assert about beauty that I know it when I see it. But then I remember a Supreme Court justice saying the same thing about (laughs) pornography. (laughs) Beauty may be to a great degree in the eye of the beholder, but isn't it to an even greater degree in the eye of the attentive? Who experiences more beauty? The person walking through the Louvre constantly looking down at a smartphone or the person washing dishes? completely present, even to the tiny wonder, the miracle of a soap bubble. There may not be a spectacular sunset tonight, but what will there be right there for you to experience if you just take the time, look and listen closely, speak with intention and carefully chosen words, and act to infuse more beauty into a world that needs all of that from all of us? When we bring a little extra to the ordinary, extra receptivity, curiosity, openness, it becomes extraordinary. Something we might not have noticed is suddenly beautiful. So every night before bed, I ask myself those four questions. Have I seen, heard, said, and done something beautiful? If the answer to any one of them is no, I have to get up because my real work, my soul work for the day, isn't finished. What I found is knowing I have that accounting every night before bed means I pay more attention during the day. And the more attention I pay, the more the ordinary rewards me with the embrace of the magical, the miracle, the miraculous in the everyday. I'm convinced The path to wonder requires a regular routine. The old joke about how to get to Carnegie Hall also applies to embracing the miracles present in the ordinary. Practice, practice, practice. So I urge you to consider those four questions as a daily ritual. And as your wonder trainer, I encourage 10 reps. That is, 10 days of that daily ritual to form a habit. Do it over dinner, while brushing teeth, while tucking in a child, right before getting into bed, or even as part of a deep mindfulness practice. I think you'll be amazed at how this deepens your days. Even so, we may never be able to live as though everything is a miracle. We may feel the desire, like Henry James, to be among those upon whom nothing is lost. But if I'm right, and miracles are everywhere, we're going to miss a few. But can we bring something, see, hear, say, do something beautiful in any moment to miracularize it? I hope so, because I just invented that word for this talk. Let's make it a thing. Miracularizers of the world, Unite. It may not be easy to say, but the t-shirt practically writes itself. (laughs) If there are objectively extraordinary events that need no miracularizing, like the fabled burning bush of biblical tradition, we won't miss those. But only our care for the everyday makes it possible to find that fire anywhere and everywhere we look. That's how we connect more deeply to the world and live more meaningfully in it. No matter the number of years that may be your or my portion, we can have more life in them, more of what we're here to experience in this singular, so very brief existence on this earth. It's true, one day we shall be gone. Between now and then, what will we have seen, heard, said, and done in this world? Make it beautiful. For then, even as we must lose this life, it will not be lost. 
Life will not be lost on us.